The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the October 4th. Terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be, and I do mean always, be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go look at the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. Now's not too soon. Of course, you can reach us internationally, or uh, if you don't want to uh, uh, do the toll-free number, it's 727-445-1044. Regardless of how you call in, we want to hear from you. Of course, you can send me an email, steve at tfn.com, and you can send me a ping inside the uh, Tiger's Den instant messenger out there. So let's go ahead and get this show kick-started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we have the Dow trading down 82 points. He's trading out of 18,170. S&P is off about 10, trading at 2,151. NASDAQ composite down 10, trading at 52.90. Russell 2000 off five points. He's trading at 1240. Lots of things moving in these markets. Currency-wise, the pound, the yen, Goldilocks, if we consider that a currency, that's trading off 40 bucks. Silver down nearly a buck out here, so plenty to take a look at. Light Sweet Crude is up seven pennies, so not being impacted by the move inside the U.S. dollar index. We'll take a look at that. First, though, let's start off by taking a look at the markets. Let's go ahead and take a look at, you know, the chart that you and I had focused on yesterday. You called it properly. You saw that price was moving lower, doing less relative energy. This was just as we came on the air yesterday at 1 o'clock, created that nice little bullish engulfing candle. Price moved higher, got above Stevie's oscillator on change line. That's the red line out here. And moved higher up into the spike earlier this morning. Right as the uh, U.S. market uh, opened between 9.30, 10 o'clock, we saw a nice move higher inside the NQ. That was a good thing. It look, what looked like it was a good thing as price was moving higher. It looked like the NQ was going to go ahead and take out its highs. Unfortunately, the good news and the bad news. The bad news is, guess what? It was moving higher, doing less relative energy out there. The same thing that caused the uh, top back here on the trading session of what, September? What was that? Come on. Come on. Work with me. We're live. We're live. Uh, oh, it's not working with me. I don't know what the heck is going on with the system here. I believe that's September 30th. That was September 30th. Um, when it formed that high out there, just as it did yesterday's bottom, just as it did on September 30th, formed the uh, bottom out here. So is there any, there's there's nothing, these patterns are working like clockwork. And I do mean clockwork out here. If we take a look, you did see the bears. You did see the bears show up right here. Nice bearish engulfing candle at 1030. Price was below where? That's right. Same same setup that we looked at yesterday below Stevie's oscillator on change line. It's not really mine. It's yours. It's ours. It's for those of us that wish to use it, of course. And for those of you that are not familiar with it, well, you can be very easily familiar with it. Plus, I give you the formulas uh, by just simply signing up for my newsletter service because you get that workshop and four others. Well, yeah, really four others. We'll talk about that later. We're just going to keep focus on the market. So where is the market headed now? Well, here's the deal. We don't have any kind of reversal signal. None. 
I mean, yeah, we're coming down into a bullish engulfing. We should say 100% move or the move is the very likely spot where we may see some support out there. That's getting back to the lows as we came on the air yesterday. I don't know if we will or we won't. Uh, if we take a look at wave counts to the downside, where are we at? We're only in wave number three to the downside. So there's not anything here just yet that suggests to me, maybe it's suggesting something to you, that this market wants to uh, stop right here, right here and now. So that's not what we're seeing inside the NQ on a 30-minute chart. And that's really where we're taking a lot of our signals from with regard to what the market wants to do. Now, is there anything that suggests uh, otherwise? Well, let's just take a look at a couple different things out here. Remember, this is a day trader's paradise. This is not an invent when we take a look at these indices. This is not an investor's paradise. This is an investor's I'm going to get whiplashed. I'm going to get hosed uh, paradise out, uh, which is not paradise, folks. OK, remember, you know, so we want to take a look at a couple different things. 83 points to the downside. You know, the first next button, first next button. What the heck is that? The next button I'm going to push is what? going to probably go take a look at the volatility index. What are we going to look for? We're going to go see what's the one-day rate of change from yesterday out here. And as we take a look at that, uh, of course, I've got to punch it up on my screen. What What's the deal here? What is going on with my system? There we go. Uh, no, only up 4%. Trading out at 1414. Okay, well, where's 1414? That is north of the Mason Dixon line on our stock charting out here. Mason Dixon line being the 50 day exponential moving average, 1384. You get a close above 1384, you get a one day rate of change less than 10%. No reason here for the market to not continue moving lower. Just the opposite. If you get a one-day rate of change, anticipate, expect, and I do mean expect a uh, bounce come overnight or tomorrow morning. Close below the 50-day, 1384. Eh, then we're still certainly in this uh, trading range out here. You may say, what the heck do you mean trading range out there? I am glad that you asked that question. I mean something like this. Here's this, this chart here is pretty uh, helpful to you and I because the bottom panel is the VIX index, right? We can see in that black line out there in this chart here represents the 50-day exponential moving average. You're above it. Lots of uh, lots of uh, bad things can happen to price. Lots of price destruction when the VIX index is above the 50-day. It's another way of saying liquidity has dried up out here. I don't really care whether it's $9, $10, $50. It's where is it in relation to the 50-day exponential moving average. Now, if we take a look at the S&P 500, again, if the mixture is right, no one-day rate of change greater than 10% out there. Uh, you trade to close above the 50-day, then price should come down and I believe at least test this little rising trend line. Just taking a look at the S&P 500. Where is that price at? That's an excellent question. I don't know exactly. Now, this is the cash indice out here. So uh, this is about 2140 or so. You know, that's what we would give it. You break through that. What does that say? That says you get all the way down into the September 13th low at a minimum. That's what it would say out there. So that's what's going on as we take a look at the uh, VIX index. If I go take a look at what the advanced decline line looks like, or the oscillator, I should say, really looks like, it looks like trash. Uh, it has basically provided us with no signals other than the roller coaster view of going up and down and up and down and up and down. Yes, it's done it at least three times above and below the zero line. So at this stage, when something's not working or it's not providing you with a clear signal, what do we do? We ixnay it. We just simply don't spend any more time with it and so therefore off of our screen it goes out here this is steve rhodes with tfnn the dow's down 81 s p is down 10 there's no bottom or anything in sight just yet there's no when i say no bottom there's no pattern there is that rising trend line in the s p 500 anticipate expect that to at least be the target on this move down here what's it do for the uh what's it do for the long term now maybe we'll go and answer that question Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. My name is Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability and host of the Trader's Ed Show heard daily here at TFNN.com. On Wednesday, October 19th at 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a special one-hour event, Trading Range Boundary Lines, where I'll teach subscribers how to identify hidden support and resistance levels, the kind that you definitely need to be aware of for your trading and investing. You'll learn how to plot major horizontal support and resistance, how to identify breakouts and breakdowns, and how to project the next price move. These support and resistance levels work for stocks, ETFs, futures contracts, 
currencies, and these patterns work on every time frame. By signing up for Mastering Probability right now, you get the first month of my newsletter service for only $49, and that includes October 19th's Trading Range Boundary Webinar. Plus, if you sign up now, I'll include access to my three one-hour workshops, the ultimate trading signals, the ultimate reversal signals, and the long, short line that every trader needs to know. This is an investment you won't regret. For all the details of the upcoming workshop and reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's off 82 points. I'm just checking the uh, checking the Steve O meter, see if there's any emails out here. Um, requesting some information, and uh, I don't see it uh, just yet. So, okay, good. All right. So, what do we want to do next? Well, hey, how can we not go take a look at gold, silver, uh, currencies, things of that sort? So, let's do a little bit of uh, both out here. Um, let's take a look at what do we want to do first? What do we want to do first? Uh, let's just take a look at uh, gold, see what we see here. Here inside of gold, we're going to take a look at a couple of different charts. So we take a look at uh, gold on this chart. Uh, things look awfully dismal. Why do they look awfully dismal? Yeah, and, you know, gold was trading in that little wedgie pattern. We took a look at a wedgie pattern, by the way, in the S&P 500. So don't uh, believe that that same pattern can't occur, which could be a very clear break of the uh, trend line. Now, this trend line, this part of this wedge, um, here's the bad. You want the good news and the bad news. You want the. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, bad news, when you break the wedge pattern out here, assuming that it's a real break, that's what we're going to assume at this stage. We don't have any any other reason to believe that it's not. What we do is we really take a look at the base of that wedge to help us identify where price will head to. So as we do that, you've been watching, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you're actually watching me do that live. If you're not, you can watch the replay of the uh, video and you'll be able to see that. What I can tell you is that the price projection of breaking that wedge would take gold down to about the $1,192 area. Now, $1,192 really takes us back to the real breakout that occurred back in early 2016, in February 2016. I'm looking at February 11th to be specific out here. That doesn't mean that's where it has to go to, but that is what's referred to as a measured move, right? When we take a look at consolidating patterns, uh, we take a look at the consolidation range and say any anticipated break of that should be equal to or greater than that consolidation. Uh, that's also something similar that you and I can do with regard to the wedge out here, and that is exactly what has taken place. So we know 
know that that is uh, uh, a target. There are no market profiles daily or weekly uh, any longer as long as gold closes below 1295 today. And that seems like um, a very likely event out here. And uh, therefore, uh, there's really no other support. The only other support out here was there certainly was a wide ranging bar breakout session that occurred on June 24th. And that low out there was 1259. So that may be and that could, that could be a level of support because the bottom of that candle happens to tie into the high of the February 11th area. But here's what we can say is if we see gold move below the low of June 24th, now you and I know a price target, and and yes, uh, I did communicate to you, each of you, two months ago, at least two months ago. It might have been longer than that, but at least two months ago, that said what? Said gold would make a bottom, significant bottom, by the way, in October. Last I checked, it's October 5th. So we're getting close. We're not there just yet, but we're getting, how do you like that? Then that's the one. So we, what you want to see, what I want to see, I would prefer to buy gold in the next mining market out here when it's really on sale. And I'd like it to be more on sale than it is right now. Now, if you're long in your positions, just have stops in place. You really should have stops in place. There's nothing if we take a look at really gold and silver for the most part or the mining equities that suggest that, um, you know, now's the time to be in it long and strong out here. With regard to gold and other currencies, right? Gold is sometimes used as a hedge. Sometimes, you know, whether it's against inflation, some people use it as a as a currency or believe that it's a currency out here. Whatever your belief is with regard to gold, let's take a look at gold. What if you were holding gold and other currencies? And today, we ought to take a look at really two currencies out here, right? If we look at gold, here, it, by the way, is a gold chart. The top portion is priced in dollars. There's a little bit of a delay on here because of the synthetic symbol that I use out here in order to price gold, just in order to, to really get a more accurate set of trend lines out here. In this case, we're looking at rising price channels. Now, today, with regard to the offsetting move inside of the Great British Pound versus gold, doesn't look so bad, does it? Right? If you were pricing, if you were living over in uh, London town, and you were taking a look at gold's move, yet you were taking a look at what's going on with regard to your currency pair, really doesn't look so shabby out there. With regard to U.S. dollars, you know, a whole different scenario. We can take a look at this with regard to how gold is doing with regard to other currencies. Does that matter for Cripes sake, yes, cripes, I said. Uh, cripes, uh, you know, if you were holding euros, which you would be if you were in France, let's take a look at, that's where the crepes came from, that uh, it was supposed to. If we take a look at uh, gold priced in euros out here, uh, let's get rid of the U.S. dollars. Well, then that's the top portion of my chart. Uh, that does not look very good out here. Not look good whatsoever, right? It has broken through a long-term rising price channel. This says, yeah, price should automatically come back here and at least test the June 24th low as well, right? Real big breakout there. Uh, what if you were not holding it in euros, gold that is, Texas tea, but instead you were holding it in uh, Japanese yen? That's what Danny wants to know. Well, in Japanese yen terms, you can see that gold has been in a descending price channel. Uh, today's price move, priced in yen, again, there's a 15-minute uh, delay on here. You can see that it's hitting the bottom bottom of that uh, price channel. Now, going below that doesn't mean diddly out here. It's really because it just means it's continuing to go lower, and Stevie would just uh, potentially have to adjust the uh, bottom of that price channel out here. But it could be coming to support in Japanese yen out here. So you can see priced in different currencies, you know, gold is doing different things. We don't have to stop right here. We can go take a look at, uh, let's see, what else, what other I've got it in South African Rand. That's, again, the top portion of my chart, I'm leaving the bottom portion here right now being um, the uh, Great British Pound. But you can see that has been in a clear descending price channel out there. If we take a look at Aussie dollars, right, the same thing. Here's where we can see it breaking through that descending price channel out here. So that says you're going back to June 24th. If you were taking a look at gold price in Australian dollars. I've got one more, I believe, that I can put up here. Where is it? 
Where is it? Not Canadian dollars. The loony. If you were a lunatic out here, actually, if you were just simply holding gold priced in Canadian dollars, top portion of my screen out here, that does not look good at all. Just simply priced in pounds so far is the only thing that looks good with regard to uh, with regard to uh, Goldilocks. If we go take a look at silver, try to figure out what silver is. Oh, also, I guess why don't we do this? Since I am doing, since I'm doing a workshop uh, two weeks from tomorrow on horizontal, well, and really on trading ranges, right, which is uh, more than just horizontal. You and I were looking at some diagonal ones right now, and again, very easy. Like, if you've never subscribed to my newsletter, it's 49 bucks, and you're going to get the workshop two weeks from today, two weeks from tomorrow. You're going to get three other really important workshops out there, uh, one that's focusing in on the reversal patterns, like you and I take a look at this price relative strength divergent patterns as we take a look at um, uh, the uh, seventh wave moves, as we look at the Gartley patterns, if we take a look at Tom DeMarc's uh, system out here, Japanese candlesticks is another thing you're going to get. So uh, just an extraordinary set of uh, workshops. And uh, start today. Start your education today. You get access to the newsletter, you know, but, uh, and look, if you've already been a subscriber, it's 149 bucks. You don't get $100 off. Not a big deal. But take a look at the education that you're going to get. So when we get back from this breakout here, let's go take a look at gold and silver since they're moving. Let's go see where some potential hidden, and we're not going to hide them anymore, horizontal levels of support are. And when they fail, where does that say both of these metals will head to? Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio 
audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, email coming in uh, from Jim. Uh, Jim saying, uh, Steve-O, I am uh, short the uh, ES Mini. Can you uh, give me a feel for uh, where uh, price uh, could find support? I'll give you uh, the levels that you want to focus on and pay attention to for sure, Jim. So if we take a look at, now we'll go, we were looking at the NQ earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, ES 30-minute chart up on my screen. And uh, with regard to wave counts, let's uh, take those off of the uh, system out here. One thing that we know is that the ES Mini has or is about to, at least on this chart here, make a 1 to 1 A to B equals CD to the downside. So that price projection is 21.38 and a quarter. Uh, uh, the actual low so far, pretty near that. It looks like it's away by maybe a tick or two out here. Let me see if I can get the exact price so far. Uh, low, 21.3850. So one tick away from that projected uh, level. That could be a place where the ES Mini would go ahead and find support. As we pull this chart back on the left-hand side, you can see that also happens to be that 100% move of a move by getting back into the September 30th level. So it doesn't mean to go ahead and take the year trade off. I don't know what time frame it is you're using. What you don't want to see in this case here on any kind of uh, bounce that takes place, you don't want to see it close above 21.48. 50. Uh, what I would actually say, I would change that number for you because I don't know what the lead in indicate what the length of time your trade was for. What I will say, regardless of what the length of time is, you don't want to see it get above 21.54.50. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I am saying if you did see that happen, then being on the short side of the trade is likely not the correct thing to do. Uh, with regard to, I saw somebody post something in the den with regard, oh, a 10-minute chart. Let's let's take a look at that, but let's do that in a, a moment. Let's take a look at other levels. So from an intraday perspective is what I'm going to look at. Another 30-minute chart out here. I'm just looking for the tab. Where the Sam heck did I put that? It's got to be, it's like, it's got to be like right in front of me. And it probably is right in front of me. It's just not right in front of me. There we go. Intraday. There we go. Here is the ES Mini. Uh, there is another level since September the 8th. That's what these horizontal lines on my chart are showing to you and I. And since September 8th, on a 30-minute basis, covering the entire time that the ES Mini is trading, there are two numbers that have held as either support or resistance. So where the ES Mini on a 30-minute chart has decided it's a good place to go ahead and have a close. Now, we're at 132, and um, as it was hitting that 2138-ish area, well, 2138 50, which is exactly where it got to, for goodness sakes. I know it says 2138.63 on my screen. That is a significant, not the most significant, but the second most significant, if you were using a 30-minute chart to uh, for price to find support. Oh, it, there's, it's closed at that stage 21 separate times. Does that sound like a lot? Well, it's a lot, except in comparison to 2155.00 which we've seen it close there 38 times out uh, since September. It's only a short period of time, right, since September 8th. I, the reason why September 8th is I'm just really trying to get, you know, um, a nice uh, a nice wave, a nice sine wave worth of opens and closes. If I use more data, I'll get some different figures, but this seems to be working pretty well. Uh, we can see that price broke through that rising price channel out here. Not a good thing. What should you anticipate? You should anticipate that 2138.50 would actually hold, that uh, we would see. And if it does hold, then you should next anticipate that price will try to get back inside that trend. It says, hey, I like that channel. I'd like to turn that channel back on. Yeah, even if we got to watch the reruns, I like that channel. Now, where does that take us to? It takes us up into about the 2148 level. That is the level, by the way, on the 30-minute chart, I believe, that I gave to you, right? Let's see, 2148.50. That happens to be my oscillator on change line. So a natural, a normal bounce when you get down to support would take you back up to what should be resistance. That's what that should be. If you close above that level, resistance, not necessarily a good thing. Again, depending on the time frame that you're trading. You didn't uh, tell me, and so there's no way, you know, all I can do is go with the uh, intraday charts because, quite frankly, this is a intraday market. 
This is not a market that has any kind of legs to the upside or to the downside. It just doesn't. Anybody who believes that it does, I beg to differ. And that's okay. That's what opinions are for out here, or at least that's what the charts are telling me. Now, with regard to the 10-minute chart uh, that was mentioned inside the den, on a 10-minute chart out here, as price was moving into the support level on a 30-minute time frame, we also see on the 10-minute time frame, price was moving lower, doing a less relative energy out here. Now, the cavalry has not arrived. It could in the next five minutes. And by could would mean you would see a close three, four points higher than where we're trading right now. Uh, actually, the cavalry will arrive if, we, if you see a close above 2145 out here uh, in the next uh, in the next. Uh, 10-minute chart in the next five minutes, less than five minutes out here. They'll know that that's going to happen. But you do see prices moving lower on a very intraday chart, doing a less relative energy out here. You are in wave number six. Maybe there's wave number seven to come. Maybe wave number seven plus a push lower with less relative energy. I, I don't know. At this stage here, there's nothing that says to me you should necessarily exit your trade again but if you were a short-term trader and i do mean short term watch that 21.38.50 level if you crack below that the beauty is our price projection then takes us down either to the next level on the a to b equals cd pattern or takes you down to well it takes you down to the midpoint of this intraday chart about 21.30 but more likely 21.22 out there so that's how i would jim that is how i would take a look at the es mini what it's doing on um, a couple of intraday uh, time frames out here. And I hope that that helps you out. Okay, we were, we were looking at uh, gold and silver. So let's go back to the uh, chart where we were taking a look at those horizontal trading ranges in gold. Let's go ahead and take a look at it in uh, silver. Let me see if I... We're going to look at the continuous contract, by the way. That's the only way for me to be able to get uh, all this data. Now, silver, if high ho silver is going to find support, it's going to do it right here, right now. Not necessarily the second, but I sort of mean right here, right now on our stock chart out here and the reason is because silver is right up against the bottom of its rising price channel this is the price channel that began back in the middle of january january 13th 14th to be specific out here nice rising price channel in fact this is one of those channels that turned into two channels it does that both diagonally as well as horizontally out here. And so if silver is going to find some footing, you know, right about now is when it's going to do it. Right at about the $17.90 level out here. What happens if it blows through this area? Well, then you know for sure a significant level of support has failed. And that says, what, lower prices. Then becomes the question, well, where would the next level of support be inside of silver? Well, on the daily basis out here, it says our next level of support will be $16.96. That's what you can anticipate if, in fact, you see silver below through this uh, 1790 area. Does it have to stop at 1696? No. Should it stop at 1696? It should at least pay a visit to the 1696 level and then uh, pause out there. It looks like we also have A to B equals CD down patterns that might take us into that area as well. So that is uh, looking at gold, looking at uh, silver, looking at uh, those two or looking at gold priced in multiple currencies, looking at the ES mini uh, intraday. What's going on? Uh, please uh, let me know what else uh, it is that you'd like me to look at here, especially during this break. So you can send me an email. Better yet, you can post a, a question inside of the uh, den would love to try to answer that i don't know if there's a question there or not um uh, there is is help us get prepared for the inevitable breakout of the es mini be it a dump scenario or a jump scenario steve rhodes with tfnn we'll be right back are china a shares hot or not if you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. 
The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, back to, in essence, the S&P 500. We're going to take a look at the ES mini since that's really the question that was uh, asked about. And what you and I uh, have done is we've we've pretty much taken apart the uh, the intraday charts out there, right? We've taken apart the 30-minute time frames. We've taken a look at all different levels of support. You can see that the level that uh, thus far has held support may hold support. So it's a significant level of support out there, 2138. You wouldn't have known that had uh, you not been um, had you not been made privy to these uh, trading range boundary lines out there, which really act as uh, great levels of support and resistance. They also help us when they fail to identify where price will head to next. Now, in this case here, we're taking a look at the daily charts. So we're off of the intraday charts. We're into the daily charts. What do we know so far about the uh, intraday or the daily chart out here? Well, first, with regard to the the low that was made out here on the trading session of September 12th. If we use just simply the low, now we're taking a look at a trend line and the low on September 15th, and then again the low of September 30th. You need three touch points in order to form a really decent trend line. The more the merrier out here. That gives us three. We can see how right now the S-Mini is also trading right into that level. Does it mean that it's going to stop there? No, not necessarily, but it is certainly up against good support uh, that has formed here recently to create that wedge. Now, with regard to the breakdown of this pattern, and this is a really nice looking uh, wedgy formation, is it not? Remember, when we earlier took a look at gold, we said when a wedge breaks, we take a look at the base to give us our measured move out here. We don't have that yet, but the idea is what can we plan for? What do we look for? So in this case here, with regard to the ES Mini, we have some other levels of horizontal support. This is what I'm going to refer to on the way down. That says that uh, on a weekly basis, the uh, bottom of its weekly market profile is 2133. That would be the next level that you would look to hold as support inside the ES Mini. I say Ixne Mixne. It has held as support slightly, but not really. 
Um, so, you know, if price is going to break to the downside below this trend line, I think it takes out 21, 33, 50 pretty easily. I think what it then does do is it goes down to a level of support that has held that support, and that would be 2108. If it breaks through 2108, that's where we take our measured move out here. And that would say what we would be looking at is a move down to about the 2075 level. That's what I would be looking at. If there's an A to B equals CD to the downside, uh, we can take a look at that with the high being here on September 8th, the low being out here on September 12th. Come on, work. There we go. And then the uh, the retracement was into September 22nd. One to one gives you 2090. One to 1.272, about 2067. That's what I would be looking at on breaks to the downside inside of the ES mini out here. But right now, it's up against a level that uh, could or should hold as support. But now we've got at least the downside. Uh, and if you're short, there's no reason here to exit the trade. Remember, I've given you levels to be watching. Of course, it depends on the time frame that you're trading. Upside. Let's say that this level here holds as support, right? We've gone down, up. If you just come, simply just come back to here, let's just count them. Here you were up nicely September 22nd, down for two days, up for two days, down for a day, up for a day. Looks like this is going to be down for two days. Could we be up for the next two days out here? My goodness, absolutely, positively, yes. Don't let anybody tell you differently out there. Are you kidding me? Of course we can. The way that this market is trading, what we should really anticipate, the larger pattern out here, is that this one continues. They say, ah, the heck with the wedge. It looked pretty nice. We're done with the wedge. We're just simply going to kind of move sideways out here with inside a trading range. That's a fairly large trading range, by the way, which is from 2108 to, in essence, 2184 out here, more likely the 2160-ish, 70-ish uh, type area, but, you know, up to the 2180 area. If this level holds today, what do you anticipate? You anticipate at least one more day to the upside, maybe two, based on the uh, current pattern, and a move back up into, you know, probably the 2170-ish uh, type area out here. Specifically, though, because the intraday charts here seem to be ruling, ruling the world out here, you'd be looking for price to first get to 2155. That would become the level that you would be looking for. Anything above 2155 brings in the 2172 level out here. Uh, is that the plan? Is that what's in place right now? The answer is absolutely positively not. It is not. Can this happen? Well, first, anything can happen. But um, the longer term pattern suggests that that is actually more likely than a not out there. What would actually make that happen more likely than not? Just a horrible finish today. Just the worst god-awful finish. Big volume to the downside. Everybody's saying time to go ahead and jump onto the short side. And then you look at that VIX index and you say, son of a gun. It closed by over 10% today. And we know the general rule is when you see that, it means that there was an exhaustive move to the downside out there. So what's most bearish? is an orderly move to the downside, not just a full-out flush to the downside. So I hope, uh, Mr. Z, I hope that that answers your question. And if it doesn't, um, I apologize. Uh, tell me what, uh, just put some more information in the den, and I'll try to uh, answer that specific question as well. Okay, so, um, so that takes care of the ES Mini taking a look at it out here. Real bad in the marketplace inside the S&P 500, because not all of you trade the ES Mini. You're saying, well, what the heck does that mean to me inside the S&P 500? And I'll say, you know, that's a good question. Inside the S&P 500, your next level of support is 2112 out here, 2112. Any break of 2112 opens up Pandora's box. And Pandora's box, price-wise, is 2000 2000 even Steven. You see a move below 2112. I don't mean like a spike below. I mean a close below 2112. And that says that more likely than not, you're moving back to 2000. Moving back to 2112, that's uh, 50 points south of where, oh, that's not 50 points. That would be uh, 40, that would be 38 points south of where we're trading right now. It would feel like the earth is caving in. No, more likely price would just be coming back to a, a level of support out there. So on the S&P 500, cash index, that is the number I'd be watching, which is uh, 2112 out there on any significant continued moves lower out there. Okay, so that takes care of um, the general markets, I think. Uh, 
What about uh, what about uh, uh, currencies, right? What about currencies? What about the U.S. dollar index? Let's take a look at it. Let's try to get a feel for what it is doing. I have a 10-minute delay out here. 96.06 is approximately where it's trading at. Uh, it hasn't really done a whole heck of a lot out here. It hasn't done a whole – it looks a lot like uh, many of the markets that uh, we can see a nice little rising – it's got its own wedge that it has formed out here. Does it not? Uh, it, it does versus the does it not. Let's go ahead and let's do this with a uh, – let's do it with a red – line out here. Just take a look at coming off of the low. We could take a look at several bottoms, but let's just take a look at the August 18th area. Let's look. Uh, let's not. Let's make this a channel. Let's make the channel. Let's do that. Let me get rid of this here. So when I say channel, I'm referring to let's just look at the uh, open or close of the candle session, the body, right, which is the essence of price. That's a pretty darn good channel line out here. So to the downside, you know, it's got some support out here. So that's bullish, right, not bearish. Uh, where the U.S. dollar needs to close above, we can see really horizontally out here, the weekly point of control, which is 96.25, has truly, truly, and I do mean truly, has actually acted as support. If the U.S. dollar index can close above 96.25, then you should see, we should see, everyone should see a move to about 97.15. May not bold well for the uh, pound. Eh, we don't know if it's the pound, if it's the euro, if it's the yen, right, that's going to impact this because this is a basket of currency. Sometimes it's also referred to as a basket case. This is Erodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking to discover a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new Market Safe Focus Commodity CD from EverBank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to six equally weighted commodities, including gold, silver, copper, nickel, soybeans, and sugar, in one powerful CD. With annual pricing caps of 50% per component, you could earn up to a 50% upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. Take advantage of this financial resource designed to grow with the times. The October 13th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome back, uh, folks. We've got two callers on the line, so in the next four minutes, let's get through uh, both of them and assist them. That's Don in uh, Virginia. Don, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Hey, Steve. Pleasure to talk with you. I Thanks. listen to you every day. You're the best on TFN and Bar None, I tell you. Uh, anyhow, you're the best. You're the best. You. I'll, send, I'll send you your $10 here as soon as we get <laughs> off the air. Now, you want to take a look at two symbols. Costco was one of them, and CVS was the other. In the case of CVS, uh, what is it that you're looking for? Well, I'm looking for entry points on both. Both of these stocks have been uh, really beaten down. I don't know why. they're. In my mind, they're terrific stocks. And so I'm looking for entry points on both. How much, you know, how, how much further down can they go? What's your, what's your well, here's here's let me tell you that here let me tell you what to watch for in the case of CVS. Yes, it is trading out at 80627 right now, folks. Today it's done about four million shares. It's going against a uh, a a swing point that was formed on February 9th that has 11 million shares. Now it's trading below that. It's testing the low of that. So the first thing you're going to look for here because you're looking for an entry point is 8650. You'd like to see a close above 8650 today. It's at 8620. You're pushing on a swing point with light volume. It can still continue to move lower. In addition to doing that, Don, what CVS is doing is it's moving lower with less relative energy. That's the black diagonal line on my screen. That's a positive that suggests a bottom is trying to form as well. The okay. third thing that it did today or yesterday was it formed a, a, TD, um, a, a TD sequential count, number 13, that shows up on my screen. That can also often be the sign of a bottom. I don't want you to go ahead and enter into this trade until we see some type of bullish reversal signal because okay. without that price can certainly continue moving lower but you certainly have something that looks like it is trying to form a uh, bottom out here so uh, so CVS so, so good spotting there with regard to CVS with regard to Costco I think we have a similar type situation uh, I don't know let me see if this is also moving lower with less relative oh it already did that Costco did that just a few days ago when Costco was pushing down on the trading session here of September September 29th, uh, it was doing that with 4 million shares, and it was pushing right down into a breakout area from the trading day of May 26th. That had volume of 7.6 million shares. So in this equity here, it pushed down to a level of uh, support, came all the way back to a breakout area. As it was pushing down, it also was pushing down with less relative energy. That is the black diagonal line on my screen. Now here, what you saw was a bullish reversal signal. When this thing gapped up, that created that little rising window, and it gapped up with some pretty decent volume behind that move. It did it with uh, about 7 million shares. What you ideally, if you're going to take a long trade in this with it pushing a bit lower today, um, you know, it's testing, boy, it's testing that swing point from a couple of days ago, uh, September 29th, that had 4.5 million shares with, with lighter volume, 2 million shares. Um, you know, this one's actually giving you a signal where you could dip your toe in it. Okay. basically right now or that 149.44 level you know might be more ideal what you don't want to see this do is get below the september 29th low which is 147.20 because if it does that down mm -hmm. i fear that it's going to come down and test this high volume level from may 18th and that's around the 138 level and so that's what i see at the moment okay great advice thanks okay. thanks steve you bet. And thanks so much for calling and thanks so much for listening. Let's get to Ben in Tallahassee real quick. Ben, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. You want to take a look at GDX. Tell me what you're, what you, uh, go ahead, yeah, take it away. So, yeah, real quick, uh, do you get a, a weekly or a monthly target low on that by chance? Uh, if I take a look at the uh, weekly out here, right now about the only thing that I can do in this uh, short period of time here is tell right, you we're below right. the .382 retracement. Probably 1981 would be something that I would be looking for. Got it. Hey, Steve, thanks a lot. Appreciate it. You, you bet. Thanks for calling. Hey, folks, stay day. tuned. Our favorite polar bear, David White, he's going to be up next. And then because it's Tuesday, we got Tom O'Brien and then Andy Heck to take it on home. Have a great Tuesday, folks. We'll see you on Wonderful Wednesday. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date, accurate, 
active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.